research areas are probability theory and mathematical statistical physics um, and largely uh, you know, various topics uh, either in both areas or at the interface and um, I'm also interested in doing uh, research that is at the border of mathematical biology because there's a lot of the uh, thought uh, processes that uh, that come from statistical physics that find uh, beautiful applications in uh, in mathematical biology, in particular uh, uh, genetics. So this is another area I really enjoy uh, uh, working in. Um, probability is of course a very eclectic area, so it itself, apart from having interfaces with physics and biology within mathematics, also has a lot of interfaces with combinatorics and with uh, analysis. So those, uh, those areas pop up uh, uh, along the way as well and that's uh, that's always a great pleasure so one application area that is uh, that is already a little uh, older and well developed is uh, population genetics so understanding how how genetic information travels from one generation to to another and uh, this this, uh, this is an area where, again, ideas from, from probability theory, ideas from, from, uh, from uh, mathematical statistical physics are extremely useful because you're thinking about very large populations of, of individuals, and individuals can be genes. And um, so, 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 so this is an, an area that has a lot of uh, applications. There are also more recent areas where in, 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 uh, in biology that are quite uh, challenging if you want to describe systems at various levels at the same time this is an area called system biology then then again uh, it is very useful to combine techniques from from analysis and techniques from probability theory to to try and uh, understand uh, models of of uh, of uh, organization for instance how how does the body develop a certain tissue, and uh, and this is uh, th this uses input from various physical and chemist chemistry processes, but at the same time you need to really come up with a good description that is somewhere halfway between analysis and probability theory to um, to to uh, to to have good models uh, for describing these processes, and it can happen at various time scales, various space scales, and it's quite. A challenging area, also an area where today lots of exciting things are, are happening. This was a meeting about it was called recent models in uh, in random media, and it, uh, as far as I understood, it was also a kind of closing event of a certain program that they uh, that they had uh, around this uh, around this area. So there, there were many talks uh, that that uh, deal with uh, with complex systems, uh, systems that have disorder. Um, some of the some of the lectures were focused around that. My my own lecture about charged polymers was was also in this uh, in this area. So it was uh, it was an interesting event also because it, people were talking about real. You know, the latest research and very, very exciting things uh, that are happening. Uh, there were talks by younger people also uh, in the afternoon, still centered around uh, around this theme. So, also at this meeting, talks that are very much at the interface of probability theory and and statistical physics. I didn't see. Um, much biology this time uh, in in this particular meeting, but uh, but it was uh, it was very uh, very interesting. I enjoyed the talks very much. One of the advantages of being a small country is that you can easily do things together. Uh, we can have a seminar in Utrecht, which is in the center of the country. People can come there in the morning and they can go home in the evening and, and it's easy to do. 
I mean, probably the longest train trip from anywhere in the Netherlands to Utrecht is about two hours. So it's really doable. And this is a big uh, advantage, not only at the level of meeting each other at, um, at national seminars, but also in terms of collaboration. So we work a lot uh, together and this is easy um, because of the small distances. In France, uh, if you want to collaborate uh, between Marseille and Paris, can be done, but it's it's a bit harder to uh, to, to organize. Um, and because of this situation, there there has been a kind of tradition growing that this is that is, this is happening. There are many universities that work uh, together. For instance, we have a joint master uh, program. So every mathematics student in the Netherlands takes 25% of his master courses. Uh, jointly with all other students in the same area and they meet uh, once a week in uh, can be Amsterdam or Utrecht and then they get courses together. This is also a place for them to meet so they meet other master students and uh, so this, this helps students to get an image of, of of, of the whole area and because they meet other people and and sometimes there are PhD students who also go to to some of the more specialized courses and this creates a sort of smooth crossover from from master to to the PhD level and that that has been uh, very useful this has been around already for for quite some time I believe we're now somewhere around 10 10 years that we're doing this and and students uh, like it again it's something you can do because you have a small uh, uh, sized country, but it builds on a long tradition where people have been working uh, together. Um, there, there's a lot of uh, ex exchange between uh, the PhD students from 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 different places, also between postdoc students, etc., etc. Even uh, at the level of grant applications, we we work closely together. Uh, recently, uh, a larger, rather large program has started around complex networks in the Netherlands, which involves four institutions in three cities, Eindhoven, Amsterdam and Leiden. And, um, and again, this is a big program where we work together, where we try to bring 20 different projects under one umbrella and, and, and try to uh, work together through to towards uh, a number of uh, themes in the area of complex networks and I personally find this exciting the, the option to be able to to work uh, work with other people at this level because in the end when we all go home we still spend a lot of time thinking thinking uh, all by ourselves and as a mathematician I find you you you, you do spend a lot of time alone uh, already, so why not try and spend the other amount of time that you have available talking to other people? And uh, so we are very happy that uh, this program will start. It will last for ten years, and our Ministry of Education has funded that, and we are very happy about that. Another uh, interesting thing that we have in the Netherlands is four mathematics clusters. So they, they, these are. Uh, national collaborations in four areas. They have also been in the air already for for six years and they are again exponents of of cross-national uh, collaborations uh, between uh, different groups and they have acted as a kind of catalyzer for for lots of uh, lots of nice um, activity. Um, um, a third exponent that I want to mention of the uh, collaboration is that uh, we have recently brought out a vision document. So this is a document um, that looks ahead, in this case, to 2025 and, and asks questions about where, where is mathematics now, what are the big challenges, uh, how are the researchers in the Netherlands positioned within these challenges, what, uh, how are we organization-wise, uh, what, uh, what areas should we uh, pick up, 
uh, we worry about the about the training of of of, uh, of high school teachers at an academic level so that they are able to prepare uh, the the best uh, students to go into into a mathematics education at a university um, uh, so we are thinking a lot about the future of course this is happening in 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 in, in every country as it should but in the Netherlands, uh, we, we have been doing this uh, over a number of, of years and, and I see that it has helped us to, to develop a view on how we could best uh, position our, our, ourselves and, and provide the environment in which uh, individual mathemat mathematicians can do, can do the best that they, that they are capable of. And this, this is done very closely, of course, with our National Science Foundation, with our Royal Academy of Sciences. Um, and since a few years, we also have uh, an organization called the Dutch Platform for Mathematics, Platform Wiskunde in Nederland, uh, that, uh, that tries to bring the various aspects of mathematics together and, and be, be very active in, in uh, in, uh, in promoting uh, mathematics and, and, uh, and reaching out as a community in, in various uh, directions, either research or teaching or publications or uh, public relations or outreach towards, uh, toward, towards industry. So it's, a, it's an interesting palette and very enjoyable to be involved uh, in. Things are are improving a lot now. We have gone through a difficult period in which the student numbers in mathematics were dropping. It started uh, some 10 years uh, ago and there was a gradual decline and we were very worried about that. We also didn't really have a good understanding of why this uh, was, was happening but mathematics was not popular and, um, and it went down dramatically. Um, and then since a few years, maybe three, four, student numbers have multiplied uh, again by a factor of three and, and everything is increasing again. This may very well be the, the outcome of, of the fact that over the years a lot of propaganda has been made about mathematics. Not only mathematics, about, but about science in general. Science is fun to do. Science is challenging. It's not boring. It's difficult and difficult is nice. Uh, and probably that has uh, helped uh, improve the image of science in general. I mean, this is not just about mathematics, it's about, about uh, physics and, 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 uh, and chemistry and, and computer science as well. And uh, young people appear to have picked this up. Probably also their parents have picked this up and have told their children, look, uh, if you go into science, uh, you you have a future, and people will love it when you go come and go into science, and it's and it's fun to do challenging and, and, and difficult things. So, so now we are in a in a big boom, seeing the student numbers going up again. We're 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 very happy. Uh, I learned that in France that is not yet happening. France also didn't experience the the decline of the number of students as badly as we did in the past. It was much better in, Fr in France for a long time and now I, I'm told that student numbers are dropping and uh, so that that is, is, is a worry. Uh, but I'm sure also in France it at some point will come up because I think the trend is, is, is again towards, uh, towards science and uh, which doesn't mean that we can lean back and, and, and stop uh, worrying about it. We have to be uh, working hard um, every day to to make propaganda for uh, for mathematics in our case um, but I'm I'm very hopeful and, and definitely in the Netherlands we see a big increase now which makes us very uh, very happy mm -hmm.